The Carnival, written by Michael Pennington, voiced by Michael Pennington. I went to the Carnival last week by myself. I live just outside the city limits in a small town in North Carolina. I'm 21 and a male. It was a cool, dry, nice fall night and half the town was here. I knew something was wrong when I stood in front of the tent that was set up for dart throwing at balloons for prizes such as stuffed animals. The man running the tent had to go behind the wall and seemed irritated and concerned. Each time he would come back to his eagerly waiting audience he seemed less friendly and he already looked pretty creepy as it is. That's when I heard the strange noise of what I thought was a girl moaning, but it was loud and I couldn't be sure. After throwing a few darts and failing miserably, I walked off and didn't think a lot more of it. Around 11.30, the carnival was beginning to close up and I was leaving myself. I walked past the dart throwing tent again on my way out. The front was empty but I could hear the man scuffling in the back with somebody. My curiosity began to get the better of me as I passed the tent. I was parked about fifty yards behind the tent in the grass. As I walked into the field, I was sure I heard a woman scream. It sounded as though it had been muffled, though, preventing the scream from coming out full force. Now I had to go back and get a peek in that tent. Everybody had pretty much dispersed to their vehicles and was pulling out and I was the only one left. I turned and went for the tent regardless. From the back of the tent I couldn't see much but I definitely heard something inside that seemed suspicious. I walked around the tent and found an opening near the back to where I could peek in. I saw a horrific scene. A teenage girl was bound to a chair, her hands tied behind her back. She was gagged, too. The man running the tent earlier was trying to tighten the rope that bound her. I knew there was something about him earlier, but I couldn't place it. He looked dirty and strung out. He had greasy long hair and his eyes were wide open as if he were on speed. He was the only one in the tent aside from the girl. My heart raced as I watched in horror. I looked behind me to see if anybody else was here that I could signal to call the police, but everybody else had pulled out and left the grounds. I decided that I would step away quietly and call 911. Just as I turned, I ran smack dab into somebody big. I assumed it was somebody that could help me, but as he stood there looking down on me, I realized this guy was probably in cahoots with the man in the tent. I took off. I could only run sideways unless I wanted to run into the tent or him. The big guy didn't even bother chasing me, but he called out to the crazed man in the tent. Then I heard a dirt bike rev up. I panicked and darted back into the carnival. I was being chased by this loon on his dirt bike, and he wasn't far behind me. Out of breath from the sprint, I ducked into the funhouse as the dirt bike came into view. This guy was hooping and hollering, and he had a damn knife. Was there really nobody left at this place but me and these freaks? And at 21 years old, I was scared shitless. I made my way through the funhouse as quietly as I could. I had to get out of here or I would be the next to be bound beside that girl. The man jumped off the bike and looked around. I could see him through a small flap. He checked a ride from bottom to top then came back out in the middle. I stayed as quiet and still as possible. Then his big ass friend finally made it over and now there were two of them. I heard the man tell the big guy to check the funhouse while he checked the concession stands. If I would have had two more minutes, I could have dialed 911. But I had to find a place to hide now. I found a trap door behind a clown. 
I squeezed into it and closed the lid. There was a whole other area down here, but it was all black. If they caught me down here, I was done. I heard the big-ass man walking on the wooden floor above me. The wood creaked. I held my breath and dialed 911. When I find you, boy, I'm going to whip your ass for snooping. I had no doubt he could do that, and I shuddered in fear. The operator answered, and I began to whisper. She was having trouble hearing me because I was being extra special careful to not raise my voice. There's nothing up here. Let's check down below. I heard him call out, but the other man said, I need to get back to the girl. That little fucker's long gone. This is our last night. We got to get out of here now. Then I heard the big man's footsteps slowly move away and out of the funhouse. I took in a deep breath and finished the 911 call, giving the operator my location and explaining to her what was going on. I didn't leave the funhouse until I heard sirens, which were all over the place in a matter of about four minutes. The men didn't have time to leave and were arrested, and the girl was unharmed seriously aside from being traumatized, of course. She went directly to the hospital to be treated for lacerations, dehydration, a broken rib, and some abrasions on her face. I made it a point to visit her. It turned out that the two men were convicts on the run for the past three years and had kidnapped this girl when she was 19 and she's now 20. Her name is Brandy. A few days later, she was returned home to her parents who were more than overjoyed to have their daughter back alive. Brandy and I stay in touch and have become close friends despite living states away. She's planning on coming to see me next fall. The carnival won't be in our agenda. To this day, I can still hear that madman driving that bike, screaming vicinities, giving chase. I'm lucky to be alive.